On behalf of the Badminton Pan American Confederation, we warmly welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Richard Wong, and it is my pleasure once again to be today's moderator. In this session, we are pleased to have one of the most outstanding badminton coaches in the Caribbean region. I'm referring to Shakira Waite from, from Barbados, who today will speak on an important topic, questioning, an essential tool in coaching. Before handing over to our guests, please allow me to tell you a little bit about Shakira. She's a BWF coach level three coach. She's coached at the 2015 Pan American Games in Toronto. She's been appointed the training and development coordinator for the Bad Barbados Badminton Association. She's had the opportunity to coach at Lee's Badminton Club Summer Camp in Markham, Toronto. Good afternoon, Shakira, and welcome to our program. Thank you for accompanying our audience and receiving us from your home in Bridgetown, Barbados. We invite you to take control and share your screen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Richard. It is indeed a pleasure to be um, a guest again on the Coach Corner program. Always appreciate what Pan Am is doing for badminton in our region. So this evening, we're going to take a look at questioning an effective tool in coaching. And before we get deep into the presentation, we have three questions here for reflection. Now you can just sit there and you can think about it. I'm actually going to share some information as it relates to these questions. Um, for me personally, the first one is question a part of my coaching style. No, it is. Um, before it wasn't when I first started coaching, it was, I was basically coaching um, on how I was coached as a player. It was more of, I was told what to do, everything. Like, like I wasn't able to, I mean, I would ask questions, but it's a case where, it wasn't a case where I had to think deep, right? I asked, what grip should I use for this shot? Okay, some grip. What's the footwear? Okay, yeah. So that's how I started approaching coaching when I first started coaching. After years of coaching education, networking, um, definitely my growth mindset, I kind of shifted from that approach. And I have started, well, it is definitely a part, um, the question is definitely a big part of my coaching still. Now that I have incorporated into my coaching, I am definitely seeing the benefit. Athletes are now, they're now open. A lot more conversations um, are being developed. It's a case where I get to know the players a lot more, especially I mean, sometimes you will have players coming from school into a training environment and they come there and they look all sad and you know frustrated. We all have those days where, yeah, someone might really turn a good day into a bad day. And just by asking a simple question, like, how was your day? You're able to find out that, hey, maybe that student had a chemistry quiz that they fail and, it might have been on their mind for the rest of the day. However, they weren't able to brush it off before coming to training. So that's something that is definitely playing in their mind that would affect the quality of training, right? So definitely it allows, questioning has allowed me to go deeper into communicating with the players, right? On court, I mean, I have, I have a particular player that he asked so many questions, which is good because when players ask questions, it shows me that they're eager to learn. They want to know what's going on, right? So it's always good to see athletes asking questions. You know, I don't always answer them, right? It's a case where they might say, okay, which grip should I use for this shot? And I will say, go figure it out, right? Because again, Asking questions and allowing them to ask questions, that's okay. But I am not going to just just answer the questions for them. They have to 
be able to figure things out on their own, you know, it is all about problem solving and stepping up and facing situations and dealing with the current situation before people telling you, well, go left, go right, walk under that bridge, all right? So definitely um, questioning has changed me as a coach, all right? I, I definitely think that it has taken my coaching to the next level. And by extension, I am definitely seeing the improvement of my players because of questioning. So this is a short clip from one of our senior national players, Shreya Martin, as to how questioning has helped develop him as a player. I am Shay Martin, national badminton player from Barbados, and I'm here to share with you how questioning has helped develop me as a player. Okay, so before, uh, we never really implemented much questioning into our actual training sessions. So to me personally, it never really aided in my development because it really and truly never really allowed me to be more free with my thoughts, really understand what's really going on sometimes where I actually feel pretty much lost in situations, especially with stroke play or even just some tactics sometimes or even just mental mental stability or even mental strength on court. So definitely the benefits of the questioning in training or even just outside of training as well has really opened up an avenue into more critical thinking in the actual training sessions or off the court as well, where it allows you to feel more free to be, able, to be more free with your thoughts as well as being more open about some some disadvantages that you may feel as a player not necessarily always that you know you are completely lost but you know where you need some sort of guidance in a way all right thank you very much for that Shay. so as we move on we're going to take a look at benefit of questioning right and these are just a couple of points that again all the information here this evening is basically how I approach my questioning in my sessions on court, off court. So it definitely helps with problem solving. It allows athletes to take ownership over solutions, right? It allows them to remember situations, whether it be situations in training, situations in tournaments, and have them reflect as to how they were able to overcome those previous situations. Athlete Center tool, definitely questioning will help with skill development, goal setting. We know we always want to make sure that our athletes are setting goals, whether short-term, long-term, you must, they must have goals. Mastery orientation. Now, this is basically focusing on learning learning skills, learning, focusing on learning a task, right? So if we give athletes input and options, right? Once we give them the input and the option, that will help with their intrinsic motivation, which will then help with them mastering the skill. Because once we, you know, you just have to give athletes the tools, give them the tools that they need, some of them will continue to figure it out until they master it, which is what we want, right? I mean, you might still have to guide some along the way, but at the end of the day, they still feel very motivated to know that, hey, I don't have to run to my coach and ask, you know, step by step what I used to do because, you know, my coach would have provided me with the tools and I can just try to put everything together and get this task completed. If I have to ask questions, I will, but you know what? I will try to do it on my own. It also helps bring uh, raise self-awareness, allows athletes to understand their own performances, understand their own characteristics, right? It will also help them develop a solid base, again, in developing whatever skill they're trying to master. And definitely athlete independence. Now we don't we don't want athletes to be dependent on us coaches. Like for me personally, I'm not always in a situation where I can travel to tournaments with my athletes. All right. 
but does it mean that they can't go out there and perform? No, right? Allow them to make decisions. Allow them to know, well, hey, you must be responsible when it comes to discipline, whether it be in training or toward your strength for conditioning. This is where you need to step up. You need to take charge, right? So definitely questioning will help with them making decisions. Now remember, questions will only be effective if you understand what you're trying what if you understand what you're trying to achieve by asking them, right? I mean, this basically explains <laughs> everything. Now, as we move on, we're gonna take a look at purpose of questioning as it relates to skill development. The first one we're gonna look at, um, improving the athlete's understanding of the game, right? Now, players must have knowledge of the tactical elements of the sport and their ability, right? And, and having the knowledge is one thing, but they must also understand when to use when to use those tools to have a successful outcome, right? Some of the aspects related to athletes understanding the game are we can look at techniques, tactics, recognition of patterns. I mean, there are some players out there that a player might say and watch and realize, well, hey, after uh, this player plays the next shot on this side, like they play a particular shot. So once we can get athletes sitting down and starting to analyze and observe those sort of things, that's very good for athlete development. Recalling situations, solving problems, and definitely being adaptable. The second one helps improve their performance. Now, we need to use questions to assist players in analyzing their performance, not only their personal performance, but their opponent's, um, opponent's performances, and by extension, their teammates. Because, I mean, let's say we have in a team meeting, we need to make sure that athletes can comment on each other's performance, guide them. Everything doesn't have to come from the coach, right? We want to make sure that Social learning is always also taking place, all right? Um, help them identify what they can do to improve their game. This is very important because sometimes we have players, they play, and it's like they don't even understand nothing that's happening on that court. You might think that something as simple as a player being aware of a grip they're using for a stroke is something that they should know. But I can tell you from my experience, I had a player, we were executing a particular shot and I asked, what grip are you using? I don't know, <laughs> right? I mean, they had no clue, right? So we definitely need to make sure that we're asking questions, keep, keep them on their toes, right? Keep them, keep them thinking. We don't, we don't really want them to laugh. It also, when we talk about improving players' performance, it also allows them to reflect, reflect, identify what happened and what they have learned, right? Which is, again, very important when it comes to reflecting. I mean, that's a big thing for me. Definitely, we need to reflect on what happened and what we did sometimes to move forward, right? So once we can get athletes sitting and reflecting, it is very, it is very, very good for their development. The third one, allow the coach to have a better understanding of their athletes. Now, this is when we think about developing players as coaches, we must know what is going on with, with the athletes. Right, whether it be their thoughts, their feelings, their goals, objectives, their likes, dislikes, we need to know, right? I mean, it also gives them a sense of, hey, maybe my coach cares, right? My coach cares about not only my development on court, but my development off court, right? It also helps you to 
understand your players a lot more, right? Put you in a better position to coach them effectively because you might be able to coach um, player A a particular way, right? But then when you use that same approach to player B, it, it's not, you're not getting the same result, right? And I mean, as coaches, sometimes that might frustrate you, but it's just a case of understanding that player, understand that everything is not going to work for every player. It's not, right? And it also gives you, allows you, sorry, to approach them. And it gives you a sense of understanding as to how to progress with your coaching. Because you don't want to move on to something when your player still haven't gotten the basic, right? Definitely don't want to do that. So we can also use questioning to test the player's knowledge. I mean, don't be afraid to ask questions, ask questions, whatever you whatever you want to know, just ask them like. I mean, sometimes you catch them off guard. You say, hey, what grip are you using for this shot? Which grip do you think you need to use for this shot? Right, just to make sure that they're constantly thinking, they're constantly with you, and they're not being caught napping. Check their understanding of a concept or instruction. <laughs> now, sometimes we give instruction, and players, they stand there, and it's like, we are, everyone understand, everyone goes, yeah, 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 we understand. Like, okay, so tell me what we're doing. Everyone was like, uh, you know, it, it's just that reaction sometimes to say, yeah, we understand, but do you really understand? No, some of them might not. So there's nothing wrong with saying, well, hey, Tom, tell me, tell me what we're doing, right? Just to make sure, I mean, it's not, I mean, yeah, you will put them on the spot, but you're not trying to embarrass anyone. You're just trying to make sure that we're all on the same page, right? And understanding your player's views, definitely. Um, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that, yes, you're telling players what to do, but you can also get feedback from them, right? You need to know, as I said before, you need to know what's happening with the athletes. You need to know how they're feeling. Um, it's a case where they might even bring something to the table that might have you as a coach saying, but hey, maybe I can do this, right? So definitely make them feel welcome by asking questions. These are some type of questions I actually use in my sessions. We have open and close, recall, movement, response, right? First one, we're gonna take a look at open and close. So basically, open questions allow me to have um, a deeper conversation with the players, right? Um, I mean, they're able to express themselves. The dialogue is more meaningful, right? And that's what that's what you want when it comes to communicating with players, whereas the closed questions will limit the conversation. So if you take a look at the table on the screen, the open questions on the left, closed questions on the right. So open questions basically involve problem solving, reflection, decision making. All of these are skills that we definitely need when we're coaching will help develop our players take them to the next level, require higher level thinking processes, and challenge players to apply, to apply and analyze information and create knowledge, right? Whereas the closed questions, again, limit to memory, require low level of thinking, and instead of creating that knowledge, it's basically use existing knowledge. Recall questions. Now, when we're asking questions, make sure that, as I mentioned before, make sure there's a reason for asking questions. Like, just don't ask a question just for asking questions sake, all right? It might be a situation that you're trying to help the player remember, 
right? Which again is definitely needed for constant development within the sport. So recall question allow players to remember what they learned previously. And I mean, I, I actually use recall question with some five-year-olds. Um, let's say I coach them the backhand, the thumb grip. Couple of sessions later, we're doing the backhand drive. Now that's a perfect opportunity to ask, okay, so what grip do you think we need for this stroke? And because they would have done this thumb grip before and they know the strokes that are played with the thumb grip, then you will hear them saying, oh, the thumb grip, right? So that's what we need. So don't think that questions are only useful as the players get older. Once we can get questions going from a very young age, it's, it's a great thing because they will grow knowing that, hey, questions are going to come. They're going to grow knowing how to express themselves, right? So all the, all the little factors and stuff that we will look to develop in players as they get older, right, which will be a lot more difficult, the younger players will be able to grow with those factors in mind. Help players make connection between a learned technique and a situation effective for prompting a player prior to completing a task. Benefits of recall questions allows players to search their memory, strengthening the link of information in their brain. Now, again, we don't want to ask, we, we want to get deep into the, in the brains, right? So we want to send them searching for information. Just think, right? Sometimes you will ask a question and straight off you hear an answer comes out and it's like, no, 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 just take a couple minutes, think about the question, you know, try to reflect, think about past situations that you were in that will help you answer this question, right? Again, player, they have some sort of ownership for producing the answer. And then in the future, they might more than likely recall on the information. Another, another type of question I use my session, movement response question. Now, every question doesn't need a verbal response, all right? And I know that we all know that especially um, with the movement response question, it raises players' awareness by having them focus on the particular task that they're trying to execute. For example, if you tell a player, okay, let me see, like, okay, what footwork will you use to the backhand side of the net? And it's like, okay, they just, they stop and they think about it. Now, by doing that, they're then able to break it down then instead of just, okay, they might not have been aware of what they were doing before, but the fact that you ask a question surrounding that particular area, then some awareness is like, a spark. So they stop, they think, and they go through it step by step, right? So definitely movement response questions are very effective. So in summary, I mean, after everything that was said this evening, um, when it comes to questioning, it is indeed a tool that we all should be using as coaches, whether we're coaching young players, elite players, it's needed. Because again, we want to make sure that the skills that are being taught on court can definitely help them off the court where we have decision-making, problem-solving. Like those are skills that we need in our everyday living, right? Off the court. So if we can use badminton to help develop these tools that would benefit them, let's say in the classroom, right? That would be great. I just want to thank you guys for taking time to join this webinar this evening. I hope that the information which was shared 
has been valuable. If you haven't been using much questioning before in your session, now is the time to stop, reflect, and think about how can I incorporate more questions into my sessions? Just for you as a coach, and for sure to develop your players, take them to the next level. So again, I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Badminton Panam, for this opportunity. And we are to questions and answers. Richard. Okay, thank you very much, Shakira. But before we go into the question and answers, we have a little bit of time for one more trivia. And that is to ask, where is the shuttle? In what quadrant is the shuttle? Please write your answers in the chat box. Who will be the first to answer? Armando has answered. Guillermo has put in his answer. Nasir, Fedor, Randy has answered. Flavia has put in her answer. Uh, Randy, Bill and Jenner Hari. Claudia. Julio has answered. A lot of Bs, a lot of Cs. Shirley. Okay, five more seconds. Ramon has answered. Juan has answered. Okay. All right, let's show the answer, please. Very well, the shuttle was in quadrant B. Congratulations to our trivia winners for the second time today. All right, so now we'll head into the question and answer second section. Please, if you have any questions or comments you want to share, write them down in the chat box. All right, in the meantime, I have a question. What, um, during a match, what are some of the questions you might ask a player who is, um, let's say, in trouble, who is not on the winning end right now? In trouble. <laughs> uh, well, for starters, um, Normally, what I, I, I want to know what's happening. So I would just go and I would say what's going on, right? To see if it's, you know, something mentally or like sometimes I would get a response where it's like my head is just not in the game. Because based on the question, I would know like what to tell them. Because you don't, you don't want to go there and give, I mean, I don't give a whole lot of information at the interval. But again, if a player is, putting unnecessary pressure on themselves. Like you don't want to go there as a coach and just start to spill all sort of tactical stuff at them when tactically that's not what's wrong. That's not what's really affecting the play, right? So for me, I just want to know what's going on. And then based on the response, then I proceed. Okay. And... Um... Shari has asked a similar question. You, she says, you spoke about questions during sessions. What about questions during a match? What type of questions do you look to ask? Well, um, definitely the open questions, right? Recall questions, because there's sometimes that you will find certain situations might reoccur in different games, different tournaments, right? So you can actually have them, you know, what did you do last time you were having this issue, right? Allow them to then reflect and think about it. Because I find sometimes when players get on the court, it's just a, 
case where they just play, like some of them don't even think. They just hit that shuttle. But once you can create the environment and the situation to allow them to stop and think, then it's like you get the you get the reaction. Ah, I'm like yes, right? Okay, and I think when you when you answered there, I think you partially answered Guillermo's question. Yes. Guillermo <laughs> is asking, what is the strategy to convince a player to change his or her strategy or style of play? Yes. I did because <laughs> I actually <laughs> saw it after um after Shari's question. Okay. All right. Uh, waiting for a couple more questions. Okay. So Joanna has said, "How does asking questions off court affect the player's performance on court?" Um, yeah, it turned off. Yes, sir. <laughs> How does asking questions off court? I mean, it, it depends on the type of question you ask off court, right? Because again, it comes down to knowing your athletes. You don't want to ask a question off court that you know that will affect their performance on court, right? So, as a coach, you need to like. Uh, there's a player coach. He he disliked hearing the word. What's it? um have fun like you know that some play, some like some partners will say oh let's you know have fun or what he dislikes that right so for him to hear that off court you know well hey that's gonna not help his situation on court so it comes down to knowing the players and knowing not what to do in preparation for on court okay and Shari seems to have another question for you. She's putting you through the ringer today. What do you do in sessions if players don't respond to you that is don't answer, as in they don't answer? If you ask oh, a question, if, they if don't they answer. If ask a question and they don't answer, no, they have to answer. Like I am, <laughs> the same way she's like bombarding me with these questions. Yeah, the questions will keep coming. Even if it's a case where I start with, um, let's say, I don't know, a difficult question, but then eventually I would start to make it a little easier just to get them talking. But then that will still direct me back to my main question. Okay, so you prime them. Yes, please. Okay. Um, what advice do you recommend um, to use when questioning during video analysis of other players or of players rather? But while analyzing, um, like what kind lyrics? of questions do you ask? Well, for I mean, we can, yeah, a lot of open questions, open questions for sure, get that conversation going, right? Um, we can also use the movement response because we do in analyzing videos, we do look at movement, right? Um, and for sure, the recall. So basically, the three that I would have touched this evening, definitely for analyzing videos. Okay. As Sarah has asked, um, when do you use open questions and when do you use closed questions? I try, I try to only use closed questions with the younger kids, right? Because, I mean... Or, or does she mean in she mean age group wise or like tournament versus training or just in general? Because for me, I try to only use closed questions with the younger ones because you're not getting them into the whole questioning aspect of things. Okay. All right. Uh, see if anybody. See if anybody has. Um, in your experience, what are the most, where are the most com questions coming from in singles play or doubles play? That's a good question. I haven't, I mean, no, seriously, like, I mean, I would have to say because of that one player I have that always asking questions, I would say doubles. Yeah, I don't really okay. get too too many 
questions related to singles, I definitely would have to say doubles. Okay, here's a good question. Are, are there any types of questions that you avoid asking your players? That I avoid asking them? Yeah. Not that I can think of one spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Guillermo is asking, in your experience as a trainer of athletes, is it more difficult to train adolescents or children? Adolescents. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I mean, it all depends. I, I mean, I do have a group of older players that, they're fun to train, right? Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I kind of enjoy training. Sense. Both. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, it doesn't really matter to me. I, I mean, bring what whoever. Yeah, I'll, I'll train them. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> okay. Let's see if anybody has any more questions for you. A lot of questions this evening. I chose the wrong topic. Yeah. Um, here's a good one for you. Uh -huh. Do you recommend using questions right after a game in which a, in which an athlete has lost, or is it advisable to wait and ask questions after, like said, the next day? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, after a loss, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna go and. I mean, I might just ask, like, well, not directly after, like, what happened. And then if I get like, most of the time you will get, I don't know, that's my cue to come back tomorrow and try again, right? But if they start to talk, that's fine. I appreciate it. But after a loss, most of the time I, I get, I don't know, or- Give them space. I don't want to talk about it. That's fine. I respect that. I'll come again tomorrow, but I will come back. Okay. Nessera has asked a, uh, an interesting question. Who asks more questions, boys or girls? Ooh. I'm sorry, Joe, this topic. What's the question again? <laughs> Nessera is asking, who asks more questions, boys or girls? Um, for the adolescents that I quote, it is it's, it's, it's on par. 50-50. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's on par. I see the names coming up and you're being bombarded by questions from your fellow countrymen or countrywomen. Dion asks, do you consider the players' personalities when asking certain questions? Definitely, definitely. Like, I, I, I mean, there are certain questions that I can ask certain pl players, um, I mean, I could just freely ask, right? But then it's like, you have to, you know, take to around how you really ask questions to other players that might not have such a like, a bubbly personality, which is fine, all right? But yes, definitely. Do we have to, I mean, like, shall we ask like 10 questions already for the answer, no, Richard? <laughs> Well, I'm sure she's asking for the benefit of everyone in the chat, um, in the webinar. And she okay. asks if after a question, after you ask a question and your view is different from that of the players, how do you handle that situation? It depends because as I said before, I, I like to know that I get feedback from the players, right? So it it's a case where I might have my view, they might have their view. and. We, we're just going to go back and forth. We're going to continue this conversation because at the end of the day, I know that you're going to see my point as, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be my point, right? I mean, yes, you had your chance and I heard your side or whatever, but you will see that what I am telling you, this is it. I, I, I'm going to give you the opportunity to spill your beans and, you know, bring everything, but yes, then you will realize, okay, it's your, it's your way. <laughs> okay, one sec. Nasir once again asks, normally when you start your briefing, do you start it with questions or with a summary? 
um, this is for training, right? So normally, I let's say I am to um, coaching, um, let's say I reverse from. So I, I go in, I introduce where it's like, okay, so today we're looking at a reverse drop. Boom. Has anyone played a reverse drop before? Then you might get, yeah, we have, blah, blah, blah. okay, fine. What grip did you use? So from there, we start with the questioning, start that whole dialogue. Okay. Richard. <laughs> You're being put in the hot seat today. They're having fun with you, Shakira. I think this is a record. I think you've been asked the most questions out of anyone I've ever seen. Ooh. Okay, um, questions are going by so fast. Okay, Moniata asks, as a coach during a game and your athlete doesn't know what to do, but they ask for your opinion, how does that make you feel? I mean, as a coach and I sit behind the court, I'm there to support, right? I'm there to to guide you. I'm there to tell you things that you might not be seeing on the court. So for me, it's it's fine. I don't feel I don't feel no way. <laughs> Always willing to give guidance. Okay. Dion asks, during team meetings, do you encourage team members to ask each other questions or do you prefer to manage the questions? Oh, um, yeah, there are a lot. Again, social learning is very important when it comes to the development of players, right? So at the beginning, we know that we must maintain respect. So I have no problem with players asking each other questions. If it gets out of hand, then I would jump in, but no, that, that method is fine for me. Another of your teammates, Sabrina, she asks, how do you encourage players who are at a mental standpoint with regards to their badminton and you and need your advice on how to bounce back? Sorry. How do you encourage players who are at a mental standpoint with their regards? This, this is in a game? Uh, I guess yeah. I guess it would be in the game. So how do you encourage players who are a mental standpoint with regards to the badminton and use your allies and how to pump? But, uh, well, you see, the thing about it is that <laughs> sometimes once the mental part, it sometimes that truly affects a player's ability, right? So it might be a case where they want to bounce back and they're trying so hard to bounce back. They're doing everything possible to bounce back, but because mentally it's like so toxic and draining, it's not, it's not, it's not happening. Okay. All right. I think the questions have stopped coming in. Thank you. So I believe we have reached the end of today's webinar. Do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience? No, thank you. Just again, I thank them very much for joining for joining us this evening. Um, thank you very much for the questions. Again, as you said, I think that this is the most questions I've ever seen. And I would know in the future not to do anything about questioning because clearly <laughs> like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, let's hopefully you let's hope um, you've started a good trend. Okay. Maybe more people will ask more questions in other webinars. Okay, okay. All right. Many thanks, Shakira, for sharing such an interesting discussion with us. It has been very enriching talking with you, and and analyzing the different topics that occur currently in badminton. And to you, our audience, please help us to improve the quality of our program by completing anonymously the question that will appear on your screen. To our badminton family, we invite you for our next program discussing the topic physical preparation and its control in badminton female players. This talk will be broadcast next Tuesday, June 7 at 3 p.m. Lima time, where we'll have the pleasure of having the presence of Al Alberto Garrido from Mexico. 
We will also share the registration link in the chat box. We encourage you to write to us and make proposals of topics you are interested in. Also, we invite you to check out BPAC's YouTube channel where you can see this and other conferences we've held. Before closing today's webinar, we greet all of our audience that have accompanied us today and in a special way, the following persons. Amy from the USA, Shirley from Guatemala, Randy from Costa Rica, Guillermo from Peru, Armando from Chile, Sebastian from Argentina, Maria from Paraguay, Flavia from Brazil, Fedor from Suriname, Sabrina, Dion, and DeAndre from Barbados, Anne-Marie from Jamaica, Huli from Puerto Rico, Nasir from Tunisia, and our good friend Belanjana Hari from Madagascar, who is always present with us. On behalf of Badminton Pan America, we thank you for your participation and hope that you enjoyed today's session. Stay well and stay safe. <laughs>